What's great about Hell's Kitchen is that the editors are usually pretty fair to all the chefs and give them about equal time. And due to the nature of the show, it's hard to be super forgettable. As even if you're a boring personality, you can be remembered for being a great chef who made a deep run or a terrible chef who completely crashed and burned. But in each season, there's bound to be chefs who simply aren't as finally remembered as their peers. What's going on guys? I'm Flynn Masters and today we'll be taking a look at the most forgettable chef from each season. As usual, no criteria, just going to base it off how little these chefs are remembered by the casuals and hardcore fandom, along with just how little they added to the show. Be sure to subscribe and like for more unique and fun HK content like this. And with that, let's take a look at my picks for the most forgettable chef from each season of Hell's Kitchen. Bloody hell, here I go again. The first three seasons will be tough to choose from, as with there being only 12 contestants, it's very hard to be unnoticed by the audience, whether for good or bad reasons. I mean, the final seven are all pretty memorable, and early boots like Dewberry and Wendy Jo are iconic for all the wrong reasons, so I think it's definitely between Mary Ellen and Carol Ann for most forgettable. And since Carol Ann is literally the first ever boot, I think I have to choose Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen was a weak chef with a pretty bland personality, and that's really all there is to say about the fourth boot of season one. Where's the Wellington, please? It's right here, chef. Let's go. Oh, no, 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 no. I've got anything better than that. For the first time, tell me, do you really want me to serve that? Come on, chef. Move, stop the table. No, but where is it? Have you forgotten it? I thought it was frog legs risotto. <laughs> look, come here, come here then. I've done, look, read it out. Where is the tuna? It's gonna be two minutes, Chef. Two minutes, hello, yeah. start us back. There you go, Mary Ellen. Thank you. There you go, take them, yeah. He sent back that whole dish because the tuna wasn't prepared. I'm so mad right now, I just wanna punch him in the face. My pick for season 2 may be pretty surprising, since I feel most would think it would be someone like Larry or Gabe. But since Larry was the first ever chef to be evacuated, and Gabe was the first ever chef to be nominated and eliminated by Ramsay without being originally nominated, I feel that alone makes them more memorable than Maribel. And yeah, what's there to really say about Maribel, other than it's crazy that she almost made it to the Black Jackets despite being so forgotten. And I guess that might explain her bad edit, as she wasn't bad enough to be clowned on, but not good enough to highlight. But we will highlight her today, as season 2's most forgettable chef. Oh, ladies. No, 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 yes, chef. No. What's on the foie gras? Oh. It's a black hair, chef. Who's got black hair in the kitchen? I do. My hair's tied up. That's straight. I have curly hair. Oh. Thank you very much. It probably was Jean-Philippe. Why not ask him? Make him put a hair in it. Do you think that's what we do to customers? No, no, chef. Never that. Never. No, chef. The person leaving Hell's Kitchen is Mirabel. You worked hard. You're a sweet girl, but I need a leader. And you're clearly not one. Thank you, Chef. Good night. I was myself throughout the process. My husband will see that, and he'll be proud of me, and my daughter will too, and that's all that counts to me. I once again came close to choosing the sixth placer, eliminated right before the black jacket this season in Brad. But unfortunately, I do think I have to choose Eddie for season three. It's a shame too, because you can't help but want to root for him given his story. But other than Ramsey being unnecessarily mean to him during his elimination, he unfortunately just doesn't add much to this season. My name is Eddie, and I'm five foot two. Born with a kidney disease, you know, stunts your growth. I'm a bulldog in a chihuahua's body. What can I say? Oh no! Oh no! Oh. It's way too peppery, and you wouldn't even serve it to a pig! Eddie, take your jacket off and get out of Hell's Kitchen. No, off. Yes, sir. Season 4 is an easy choice, as Shane is flat out one of the most forgettable chefs in Hell's Kitchen history, much less this season. Yet despite being so forgettable, she will always have her funny yet brutal elimination reasoning from Ramsay. Shayna, give me a jacket. A big heart. Solid cook, yes, but personally, just a little too slow. Yes, chef. Good night, my darling. Good night. Shayna has a big heart, but at times I felt her heart wasn't here. It was back home with her newborn baby. That's why she's going back to something she's good at. Changing diapers. Season 5 is such a tough pick, as it's an iconic season full of iconic characters. Pretty much everyone in the endgame is pretty memorable, and you also have some all-time donkeys with the likes of Colleen, Seth, and Lacey. I think it's between two early boots who weren't really that bad, all things considered, in Will and Charlie, and my pick goes to Charlie. To be fair, one could argue Charlie's beard is more memorable than Will, but I think since Will was indeed the first boot, combined with the fact that he was one of the first openly gay contestants, that makes him a bit more memorable than Charlie. Charlie. Yes, Chef. I do not want a complaint of a 12-inch ginger pubic hair in someone's creme brulee. You got it, Chef. Snip. Now, 
Yeah. He's trying to get a rise out of me, and uh, I'm not going to give him that satisfaction. It's just a little hair on my face. Two covers, double seven, unfold your arms, Charlie. Two seasoned salad, entree, one tuna, one filet. Let's go. Why aren't the shrimp on? I've got them right here. I was throwing them Get on, them chef. on! I am right now, chef. Sorry, chef. Come on, Charlie. Yes, chef. Your cloth's on fire. Your cloth's on fire. Get it in the water, Scott, please, before he sets the place on fire. Doing my best, chef. That's your best. You might want to rethink your best a little bit. Similar to season five, season six is full of iconic chefs, with even the less known chefs still having their moments that are impossible to forget by the hardcore fans. In my opinion, the only true forgettable chef from this incredible season is Tech. Tech came into the season with some serious pressure, as she had no career to go back to after the show. But despite this extra motivation, she wouldn't do well at all in Hell's Kitchen, pretty much not having one good service leading to her elimination in episode five. So, first name is? Tech. Right, Tech. I am not coming in with a career to go back to. Like, I need this job. I got a family to support. I gotta win this. Off oh, tech. Tech! That's still blue in there. Yeah, just touch that on top there. Touch. Come on. Touch it, Suzanne. Touch. Get it back in the oven now. Fingers are going right through it. It's blue. Where's the steaks? Coming up with steaks. Now they're burnt. I am so upset. They're black. How can I serve that and that on the same table, Tech? Sorry, Chef. I'm so embarrassed. Tech, give me a jacket and leave Hell's Kitchen. Life is not over for me after Hell's Kitchen because I am a crazy badass girl and I'm a hell of a lot better cook than Chef Ramsay saw. For season 7, my pick is between two forgettable early boots in Stacy and Jamie, and for the first time so far, I'm going with the first boot in Stacy, mainly because Jamie's too thick moment is an iconically bad signature dish. As for Stacy, she didn't really do anything terrible for being the first boot other than get overwhelmed, and yeah, that's really all there is to say about her. My food is absolutely amazing. I'm just totally gonna rock the fish station out. Where's the curry powder on there, Stacy? It's seasoned with salt and curry powder. Where's the curry powder? Right there. Stacy. Yes. Yeah. Chef. I asked you to season them with curry powder. You macerated them. Look at the seasoning there. But the sad thing is, they're not even cooked. They're raw. They're raw and stone cold. Off, will you? Yeah? I need like five minutes. Oh come on, Stacy. How can I wait? Nearly two hours for an entree. Now you want five more minutes for the salmon. Three minutes. How long? Three minutes. Why are you jumping all over the place? Five, three. Tell me. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take. You're not sure? No, Chef. Madam, come here. Yes, Chef. Do me one big favor. Get off out of here. Join the rest of them. I'm not sure. Once again, going with the first boot for season eight in Lisa. It was definitely between her and Louie, but I think Louie being the one to instigate the iconic blue team versus Raj fight alone makes him pretty memorable, at least compared to Lisa. Again, Lisa wasn't a horrific first boot by any means. She just simply had a bad night on fish and it cost her. It's a shame too, because you could tell it really hurt her to be the first boot. And it appeared we were heading towards a rivalry between her and Sabrina, which could have been a fun old timer versus young buck storyline this season. Lisa, we have more scallops going? Yeah, they're going down right now. Is your pan hot that you just threw them in? I didn't throw them in yet. She's so slow. She moves like a turtle. They're, they're not in the pan right now? What? Oh, it's right here. Oh, mangada, mangada, mangada. Hello, it down here, please. Lisa! Yes, Chef. Chef. Come here. It's sushi. I'm hey, sorry, Chef. Hey, madam, what's happening here? I f***ed up big time. I'm really disappointed in myself. I honestly never would have thought I would have been the first person to go home. Chef Ramsay should have sent Sabrina home. There's no doubt in my mind if I ever meant to cook off, I'd kick her ass. My pick for season nine is once again an easy choice being she's an all-time forgettable chef, with that being Amanda. And yeah, while she was fine and just kind of there for the first two episodes, Amanda's poor episode three service got her the boots. And while one could argue it should have been Carrie, Ramsay obviously saw great TV potential in keeping Carrie around, and thus, Amanda would get eliminated instead. Oh my God. Amanda! What is going on over there? Amanda! Yes, Chef. How long for the first two bats? Three minutes, Chef. It's raw. I didn't cook it. You didn't sear it good enough, and you covered okay, it with a pan. Okay, you don't need to yell, you need to yell at me. I'm already getting yelled at by the chef. Why the f are you yelling at me? There's nothing happening, Amanda. I'm sorry, you guys. What's There's going, Amanda? Here. I'm sorry, Chef. What's going? I have two bats on this ticket, Chef, with a lamb. And a cod. And a cod? And a cod. The cod's not on? The cod is not on, Chef. What? I forgot about it. You haven't got the cod on. I forgot about it. <laughs> Ugh. It's disaster night. I'm sorry, Chef. 
Season 10 might just be my toughest choice, as there's two all-time forgettable chefs this season in Brianna and Chris. I think most would pick Chris, but for me, I gotta go with Brianna. The thing is, Chris's terrible service gave Barbie another chance in the competition, which she of course took advantage of, and he has won the most pathetic nomination please in Hell's Kitchen history. And I also think Brianna's monotone personality despite being on the chaotic season 10 red team makes her even more overshadowed than she already would be on any other season. So yeah, you can flip a coin here, but Brianna takes the crown for season 10's most forgettable chef in my book. I think I kind of already have a crush on Sue Chef Scott. He does look scary, but I don't know, something about that bald head. Brianna. Yes. Entrees on the menu, what are they? Um. We're about to open, and you can't name the entrees. Um. Are you kidding me? We're so screwed. Um. Uh, filet of beef, the miso glazed cod, New York strip. Good. Right here. Stop. All of you! That's barely a portion, and where's that going? Oh, I didn't realize they shrank down that much, Chef. It's a bit like your brain. Not only has it shrunk, but it's disappeared! Season 11, one of only two casts to feature 20 contestants, and unfortunately, the editors have no choice but to under-edit some people given the size of the cast, and there are a lot more forgettable chefs than usual this season in the likes of Amanda, Jacqueline, and Jessica. However, I think in the end, I gotta go with Christian. He also had a fine opening night, and even helped Zach finish service, to which the editors unfortunately didn't highlight, but would crash and burn the following service, leading to a very forgettable Hell's Kitchen run. And where did you get the majority of your line experience? Uh, I bounced around through mom and pop shops in the north end of Boston. It's got flavor. And you've got heart and passion in there. Thank you, Chef. Christian! Yes, Chef. He brings up scallops. <laughs> rubber. I must have made scallops a million times. Scallops, please! I can't believe I'm doing this right now. They're not done. What? There's just nothing coming out. We are struggling. Christian! Stop me around! Hey, I'm a Boston guy. I had my Bill Buck the moment. I froze at a big time. I didn't get my second chance to fight, which really pissed me off. Chef Ramsay made a big mistake by getting rid of this Boston guy. Season 12 is such a hard pick for me personally, as unlike season 11, we got to know so much about these 20 contestants, and I love almost all of them. But I think there are two clear outliers here, with that being Chris and Bev, as both are early boosts, but not too bad of chefs, a recipe to be forgotten about in the edit. I think my pick here, though, has to be Chris, as Bev at least was standing next to Jessica during her iconic plea, absolutely throwing the poor woman under the bus. Now again, Chris wasn't an absolute ghost, as he really was the first of many chefs to bring up his hatred of Mike, and in general, it's always surprising to see someone in his archetype do so poorly. But yeah, really not much else to say about Chris, other than it's absolutely hilarious he was the first overall pick at the finale dinner service. I own everything and anything that I do in that kitchen. But Mike, he's poison for the team. Keep DeMarco, keep me, but get the Mike out of here. Okay, take no, this here. Hit that oil right take there. I don't want to take a chance I, to come back. I haven't changed the way I've done this cooking, okay? Nance had hands everywhere, and it's like, shut the up. I know what is going on. Go with these five, please. That's it, we're out of dope. Say that again? We're out of pizza dough, chef. What the fuck is going on in here? Chris, come here. We're out of dough. I believe so, I chef. Not. We're in the middle of service. It's not okay. I'm sorry. What the f is going on? We you, chef, I'm sorry. Season 13 pretty much unanimously agreed as the most forgettable season in Hell's Kitchen history. And man, just looking at this cast, I can see why. I mean, literally all the early chefs other than JP add absolutely nothing to the season. I guess if I had to choose, it would be JR, because at least there was some cattiness from the likes of Deneen and Kaylin, and Janae forgetting how they count, along with her iconic reaction to being chosen for Hell's Kitchen, is far more memorable than anything JR did. At least his initials did give us an iconic line from Ramsey, though. JP! Yes, chef. Just pathetic! JR! Yes, sir. Just ridiculous. I haven't sweat this much since 2006. It's time to go upstairs and take a break. Where's JR? I have not yet. <sighs> kidding me, bro? I don't want to get in y'all wood. I've been cooking for 11 years. I know how to cook pork. Hey, blue team, come here. That halibut is cooked beautifully. Good job. Thank you, thank sir. You. Why are you saying thank you? Because we're a team, What's sir. funny? Nothing, sir. Let me tell you something. The oh. pork is Oh. I'm trying to come back. I'm going to make sure the lamb is cooked perfectly. That looks like it's for Chris. Bosh, yeah. Raw. You. Get out. 
Season 14 is another very tough pick, as pretty much each chef is either really talented or an outlier from the cast with how bad they are. I think my pick in the end has to go to Mika, as other than the fact that she was eliminated in a pretty crazy fashion, I can't tell you one thing about her, and I don't think I'm alone with that statement. Hey, 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 stop, stop! Stop. No, 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 hey. Come on, really? Who cooked I that? I cooked that steak chef. Hi. All of you. All of you. There's the last New York strip. Look how well done it is. This is an embarrassment. Get out. Get out. Sarah. Holy that's what you guys get for putting us up there. Back in line. Mika. Give me your jacket. Young lady. Yes, chef. You have no confidence in yourself, and I could see that you were done. Give me your jacket. Thank you for the opportunity. Good night. Good night. While Mark has in some ways become a legend to the hardcore fans given just how invisible he is, thus making me not really want to choose him, come on, he is literally the least invisible contestant in Hell's Kitchen history, I have no choice but to pick him. I mean, his one and only confessional wasn't even in his chef jacket. Absolutely insane how much the edit ignored him. Pizza, how long? I'm ready, chef. Walking through the window. By the way, in England we have a saying, when it's brown it's cooked, when it's black it's <laughs> Disgusting. Who cooked this? I started it, chef. Eddie finished it for me. Come here, you. Taste that. It's bland. The rice is still undercooked. Mark is not getting any of his dishes right. He looks like a deer in headlights when he's getting yelled at. Bro, like, wake up. I gotta say, Mark, I think that just getting off on that first turn, you know, with the pizzas. I just didn't hear your voice the whole time. I didn't see you coming over helping, but you were in your own world too, you know? I'm very passionate about what I do. I really want to stay. I know I can bounce back. I know I have the skill set. Sorry, chef. I wish I could have done better for you. So do I. Good night. I came in thinking that I was going to be on top, and here I am, first to be kicked out. Every part of me wishes I could come back tomorrow, you know? It's hard. While Aziza is clearly the pick for season 16, that's actually a good thing, as in a season full of bad chefs and terrible personalities, a generally likable chef like Aziza is going to be forgotten about. Again, this is truly nothing but praise with this pick. Aziza, describe the dish, please. It's a pan sear wahoo. That's delicious, sir. Thank you. Really delicious. What am I expecting in the middle here? Perfection. Perfection. <laughs> <laughs> we did kangaroo, we did buffalo, we did lamb. We touched them near every meat that can be brown. Squab and octopus. Yeah! yeah! Oh, squab? I don't know what squab is. I never even heard of it. Well, I'm a research that. I'm a research squab. I'm gonna Google it. Aziza. Aziza, listen carefully. Yes, you're a sweet girl, passionate, but you are not ready to take up the position at Yardbird. Thank you, Chef. I really appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good luck, everyone. Bye, Zay. Bye. Bye. 16 chefs were brought back in season 17 All-Stars as they were some of the most legendary figures in the first 16 seasons of the show. And it's hard to imagine that one could go from an icon to overshadowed, but that did happen to a couple of returning chefs this season. I think I gotta go with Dana. I mean, I can literally not tell you one thing that Dana did this season or why she was even eliminated despite nearly earning another black jacket. Heck, I don't even think she screamed in her confessionals this season compared to season 10. No wonder why she wasn't as remembered. On season 10, we had a similar challenge and I won that challenge. So so I'm feeling really confident. I want to win this challenge again. I did a seafood pasta. This is kind of a problem. The fish is poorly cooked. Too much dairy, too heavily clumped together. Like there's maybe a little bit too much going on. 63 total. They're tough. <sighs> I was really hoping to come through for my team, and now I have this low score. Walking with Beef Wellington. Yeah. Michelle, you need help? No, I got it. Dana. Yes, Chef. Ladies, come down here. Yes, Chef. Just look at the color of that beef. I'm a cook, Chef. Yeah, it is overcooked. Come on, Dana. Right here, right here. Mourinho. Mourinho. Hey, just come here. Just touch that. Just touch it. Just touch it. Come on, Dana. I, I don't know where to Come go. Come on, Dana. Can I put that back in the oven for you? Back in the oven. You can go back in the field. First of all, I couldn't wait to bring you back. But unfortunately, today has been one of the worst days you've ever had. 
you're not ready to become my head chef in Hell's Kitchen. Please give me a jacket. I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing that in a rookies versus veteran season, a freaking returning chef would be more forgotten about than a newbie, but that is indeed the case here. And not surprisingly, the returning chef was from season 13. Seriously, am I the only one who sometimes forgets that Ro was on this season? Uh, give us a little insight. Uh, I'm Ro. Right. I finished fifth on season 13, uh, Black did. Jacket. The only ambition is to be the executive chef of the Hell's Kitchen restaurant. That's it. That's There's the no only other ambition. ambition. Love that attitude. Good. Woo! I'm here to be Chef Ramsay's next head chef. So I like this dish. I'm proud of this dish. Thank you. The swordfish been basted in a kefir lime butter balanced with a raspberry crab apple and pomegranate sauce that's delicious thank you thank you chef bro congratulations thank you chef head upstairs thank you chef i've been the quiet assassin this time now chef knows that i'm here i showed up i want to be his next chef Despite being the most recent seasons, the new era has given us some pretty forgettable chefs, with Fabiola and Brittany being right up there for season 19. I guess since Fabiola was of course part of the big controversy and downplaying Nikki, that just edges her out over Brittany. Like seriously, who is Brittany? Marino's family, entree, one lamb, one salmon. Heard? Yes, chef. Let's go. I can cook anything you put in front of me. Snapping turtle, squirrel, rabbit. The list is endless. Listen, I've got this. Walking salmon behind you. Uh, Unbelievable. Touch it, ladies. The salmon's It's definitely embarrassing letting Marino's family down and he goes like, what the f has Marino ever done to me? One bad knot doesn't make a bad chef. I didn't get upset. I f it up. I'm going to do it again. I'm determined and I want to stay. I want to keep learning. I've seen the determination, but it's just not coming together. You should be a lot better on the third service. Yes, chef. Give me a jacket, please. Thank you. Thank you, chef. Good night. While season 20 is full of a ton of talented and nice young chefs, unfortunately, their personalities were pretty vanilla, with a lot of forgettable early boots. But I think the most forgettable of them all is Morgana. As other than it being funny that her name is Morgana instead of Morgan, I cannot tell you one thing about her. Morgana, how old are you? I'm 21. Stop it. You look 16. I have a baby face, but yeah. I have an old soul. Describe the dish, please. Um, today I made for you a pan-seared duck. Uh, visually, it looks beautiful. Thank you. I'd like to give her a five. Congratulations, Morgana. Walking to the palace behind you, chef. It's hot. Red team, come here. The halibut's still raw in there. It's still raw. It goes back in the pan, Morgana. Put it back in the oven. Back in the pan. I definitely just like want to cry. It's really, really frustrating. Morgana might be baby-faced, but tonight she behaved like a baby when her fish station struggled. The protege I'm looking for needs to be confident and outspoken. Morgana was neither. We finish off with the most recent season, and this pick is actually somewhat hard, as it's between Charlene and Sakari. Charlene was the first boot, while Sakari nearly earned a black jacket. Like, how is this even close? But in the end, while Sakari is one of the most underrated contestants in Hell's Kitchen history to make it as far as he did, I still gotta go with Charlene. As with the other first boots on the list, Charlene was bad, but not iconically bad in the opening night dinner service. And not only that, but she was a pretty tame personality, and her elimination would get overshadowed by Zeus's antics. Earth to Charlene. How long? 15. 15 minutes. 15 minutes, yeah. 15 minutes. I just don't want to give you a low number. I was you don't just, what? I was trying to overestimate. A so. wrong number? Yes. 15 minutes. Too long, Chef. They cold? Damn it. I just Shut the f up. Cole Wellington and pink chicken. Now get the f out of it. You know, I didn't come all the way out here for a one dinner service. I was not taking the initiative, and it was a fatal error. So there you have it, guys. My picks for the most forgettable chef from each Hell's Kitchen season. Let me know if you remember all these chefs in the comments below, along with any picks you disagree with. Be sure to subscribe and like, and give me more ideas for season videos like this. And until next time, have a good one, guys. Get out of there.